evidence of how powerful these chemicals are lies in the way farmers react to them when they apply them without the necessary protective clothing. Ernest Boabeng, popularly called Wafata, is a garden eggs, pepper and tomato farmer at Bregrom. We visit his one-acre farm. Dark in complexion and fairly short in height, he carries a sprayer on his back and in a black Wellington boot and a long sleeve shirt, spraying his field to destroy pests. The rain that comes in good in your mouth uh, and your nose, so that when you are spraying, you will see that you become, it brings you a headache, pains, even pains, and you get a uh, eyes problem. If we don't protect ourselves while spraying, it makes us ill and gives us problems. I'm unable to sleep at night. I get fever. I can't even breathe. My body itches. Then I get headache. I'm unable to go to work for three days. And in fact, in the home of rice farmer at a Suchuare, John Aokujiwanu, they lost a life thanks to the wrongful storage of chemicals. I lost a cousin's doctor to insecticide. The farmer went to the farm, came back, and actually didn't keep store the there are many pesticides that he brought from the farm. So this little girl took it and uh, drank it and died. It became something that I've been pondering over and I was very, very, that girl could have been a lawyer or a doctor. And I was very saddened by that. But one way or the other, these chemicals find their way into the diets of many as a result of wrongful application and handling. As the study by Higanana Boro of the KNUSC Surgical Department reveals, a lot of these chemicals are in the diet you consume every day, usually above the permissible limit. At the end of the study, it was um, seen that most of the vegetables contained some um, traces of microbes, microbial residues, and then they also have various pesticide uh, residues. They have various residues in different ranges. During our program, we realized that most of the farmers were using the chemical containers for keeping salts in their kitchen. Some also were using it for water. And in the Jura, we have a lot of mosques there, mosques. So they were using it for their ablution, for praying and those things. And uh, it, it is dangerous. With the chemical container, even when it is, you triple rinse it, you put water inside, you shake it, and you pour it back into the spraying tank. If you do that for three times and you, 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 you leave it there, it still has uh, some residues in it. It's still considered hazardous. Most of our tomato farmers think that the tomato, you can get the very red ripe tomato by spraying dietin on it a day before harvest. Dietin is a chemical and needs a certain number of days, if not weeks, to break down. To the farmer, it helps the tomato to attain that very red ripe status. So he puts it there. So most of us will go to the market, we'll pick tomato, and you see this yellowish powder on it. And sometimes I ask myself, how many of us really take time to wash this tomato before consuming it? Farmers misuse pesticides in at least seven different ways, including spraying too close to harvest, over dosage, and applying pesticides intended for cash crops like cocoa and cotton to the growing of food crops, some of which contain active ingredients that are unsafe for consumption. A recent report by the Northern Presbyterian Agricultural Services 
documents how in 2010 alone, 15 persons in the Upper East region died from suspected pesticide poisoning, according to the Regional Health Director for Health. Most of these deaths occurred due to poor storage of pesticides, which seeped into foodstocks. 118 others suffered poisoning from consuming food contaminated with pesticides in the Garu, Boku West, and Talensi, Nabdam district. Food consultant Irana Tefwa attributes the situation to the fact that a lot of these farmers are illiterate and don't understand safety instruction. We have a huge problem because one, between 30 to 70 percent of the farmers who are producing vegetables for us to consume are illiterate. The, the production context is changing. The, the factors that come into play are becoming complex. Um, with the coming or improvement in science, agrochemicals are not the simple agrochemicals that we used to know. And because of that, you need some minimal education or sensitization to be able to decipher between which product I should use at what time. And that is, that is where if you match it with the educational background of farmers that we have, and also within the context where extension is more or less out of the way now, you know, then it becomes a very, very dicey issue that we need to look at. There are lots of obsolete and expired chemicals on the market, some of which are being used on farms thereby endangering food consumers and farming communities. Frederick Brampong is Programs Manager of Crop Life Ghana, an association of chemical sellers. We still have um, issues with obsolete stocks from the um, importers of agrochemicals because once chemicals are still being brought into the country, we will still have issues of obsolete stocks. Not all the chemicals uh, are sold at a certain point in time. And chemicals have chef's lives for over two years, for just two years. And after two years, you can extend the usage for about six months, and then it becomes obsolete. I visit Kejetia in the Kumasi metropolis. Kejetia is a hub where you get all kinds of food to buy. Whether you want to buy in bulk or you want to buy in single quantities to take home to go cook and consume. It's also a hub where a lot of these chemicals are sold. Despite the strong nature of some of these chemicals, they are not sold under any regulated conditions. Some are sold on tabletops, some of them have inscriptions in foreign languages. Sadly, a lot of the sellers are uneducated, raising concerns about how they are able to properly advise their consumers on how to use these chemicals. Most of the people selling at the chemical stores they don't. They are not qualified people. Chemical, some of them. Uh, poison. It is said they're sick. Sick. I cut a The chemical is poisonous. It is like machete. It can be used for both good and bad. So it is poisonous. You have to try and educate farmers on their use. Farmers, sellers, a study by the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission in June 2010 at five markets in Accra found that 23.8% of the fruit on the market contained residues of insecticides like DDT above the accepted maximum residue limit. The report warned the continuous consumption of said foods could result in deadly chronic effects. In order to contain the problem of food contamination, there is a push for a ban on the application of chemicals to food production. Samuel Tamils is a farmer and the member of parliament for Commander Edina Eguafa Brim. My recommendation is we need to ban these things. We need to get to organic farming. And before any anybody... ban what exactly? Ban is ban the importation of these things. The pesticides. The pesticides. And anybody who is going to handle this should be a qualified person who knows how to handle it. And we shouldn't be, I mean, dependent so much on these things. Most of the advanced countries have banned all these we decide. But then they need to make money, so they send it to us. But the chemical sellers disagree. Frederick Bampong of Crop Life Ghana admits there is a problem with how chemicals are handled that needs to be dealt with. But he says a well-structured educational policy 
needs to be rolled out to deal with the problem. We introduced the concept of the SSP, the Spirit Service Provider Program, which is, uh, which is in itself uh, a program where farmers are being trained to spray the farms of other farmers. These people have been trained enough to have the technical know-how to, to protect themselves, to spray the farms, and to make sure that they don't just spray the farms, but they spray the farms in a, such a way that the farmer will have his maximum share of yield, and also there will be no residues in the, in, in the products for consumers. And they also protect themselves. Believe you me, we are at this stage and we can't do without chemicals. He's worried about the presence of too many fake chemicals on the market. Most of the crop life member companies are complaining of their products being fake. People are using labels, printing labels and putting on, uh, printing labels of crop life member companies and putting on other concussions and selling to farmers. And it is in the broad daylight. Everybody is seeing it. Uh, the regulators are saying we should have pesticide inspectors across the country. But unfortunately, um, either they are not enough or they are not there at all. But we are not seeing the effect of their inspection because it, it, it's a whole mess up there. Extension agent Christian Zomelo is advising that farmers do not jump into the use of chemical pesticides without the necessary consultation with plant experts, even when their farms are attacked by pests. We are advising that whatever they see on the food, they should uh, inform the Ministry of Agriculture, or Department of Agriculture, and then they take sample to them, preferably the plant doctors, so that they can actually do diagnosis and then make prescription for them. Yes, not just to go to the uh, store and buy whatever chemical, no, but at least as we've been going to the hospital, when you see a doctor, he will give you the treatment and then the pre prescription so that you go and buy what is actually uh, needed to cure that particular disease. Most of such contaminations do have long-term effects on human health that usually happens without notice. The short-term impact is what usually manifests in annual cholera outbreaks during the rainy seasons that Ghana grapples with. The Greater Accra region remains the epicenter of the outbreak, recording over 7,000 cholera cases and over 60 deaths. In 2014, Ghana suffered the worst cholera outbreak in our history. That year alone, more than 200 people died from the disease and more than 20,000 cases were recorded a situation that stretched Ghana's public health response system beyond its limits, something Dr. Doné Amame says could have been prevented if a lot more caution was exercised in how we handle food. The most important thing is that to be able to understand how foodborne diseases uh, are acquired, it's by the contamination of the food items. So once you understand that, the things that we can do to prevent is consume food that is hot, or you heat food that you are going to leave for some time. This heating and refrigeration are very important in uh, preventing football illnesses. Though there are some exceptions, there are some organisms that may not succumb to the heating and to the uh, refrigeration. But generally, that is the way to go. And also, when we have to consume food, we have to properly wash our hands if it is food that we are going to touch with our hands. If it's, you are going to use utensils, to cook food, we have to wash these things very properly before we prepare our food. So generally, this is, these are some of the things we should be doing as we approach the rainy season. And if by chance anybody gets any symptom that is suggestive of any food illness, the best thing to do is to report to the health facility. The funny part is that some of the foods we consume in Ghana are not accepted at the international level. For example, Ghana has for the last two years not been able to export chili pepper to the European Union after pests were detected in some of the exports. Farmers are lamenting this. Now I say, well, the cry, you can force you to be able to And the idea of this, and the idea of this, and the idea of they claim there are pests in the pepper and the Yuki has rejected it. So for two years now, we don't grow some. 
Usually, I make 15,000 cities every year when I harvest, and it helps create thousands of jobs for people. Now, all the jobs are gone. But funny enough, such foods are consumed in the country. For industry players, this is completely out of place. Anytime we talk about quality food, normally we want to look at food product that we are exporting. It does appear that the people out there would want to eat quality food, and we are also concerned. You know, we make every effort to provide them with quality food. But I ask myself, what about the food that we consume locally? Can this contamination cause ailments? Can it kill people? And the answer is yes. So as much as we as a country make efforts to promote quality food for export, I think that we also need to look internally. The point of interest is that if the foods are not good for export to the international market, why is no one stopping Ghanaians from eating them? The Food and Drugs Authority, however, says it is doing a lot to deal with such food contamination cases. Maria Lovelace Johnson is the head of food regulation at the authority. The FDA is working assiduously to ensure that food on the market is safe. Food safety is a collective responsibility. We cannot be everywhere all the time. So we would want people to also help us in that regard. If you get to know that someone is doing something bad, someone is adding some adulterant somewhere, someone is doing something bad to a product, you can just tell the FDA. Dr. Doné Ameme wants government and particularly city authorities to step up their game and do the necessary checks on foods that are brought to the market. There's always room for improvement. We, we are doing well, but we can improve upon that. For example, food uh, vendors all over the country sell food without having certificates, health certificates that gives them the, uh, or that permits them to sell the food. So we need to be able to enforce this so that every food vendor, people who are selling food for people to consume, are examined by medical experts and they are given the appropriate certificates that they require to be able to sell food. And also the food uh, and just authority also does uh, some surveillance activities to be able to uh, ensure that our foods are prepared under very hygienic conditions. These are being done, but I think uh, the extent is what I, I will not be able to comment on. But I think there's always room for improvement. Frederick Bampong of CropLife Ghana says the Environmental Protection Agency and the Ministry of Food and Agriculture need to do more to help sanctify the use of agrochemicals in the country. With regards to EPA and uh, let's say PPRSD, um, they are doing their best, but unfortunately their best is not enough for now. Um, we have a lot of challenges in the system, especially with the um, influx of uh, importers uh, of agrochemicals. Everybody is bringing in agrochemicals and I think um, the regulators will, will be very helpful in making sure that they check this uh, anomaly because um, we have a, a whole lot of agrochemicals in the system that are not um, registered for use in the country. But a great consultant, Irona Tefua, is worried most of these institutions have not been given the adequate resources to work. The very laws that create this institution also stipulates that these institutions are funded. And the reality is that you go into some of these institutions and money to, you know, conduct surveys on the, or surveillance on the, on the markets and also to, to enforce the regulation. It's not there. You know, so the institutions themselves internally have their challenges but they have also uh, challenges in terms of resourcing. Nana Ifia Boro of the KNUST has the following recommendations on how the problem with pesticide residue in food and use of polluted water bodies for irrigation can be dealt with. Um, if these farmers can organize themselves and then form 
um, well-recognized groups and try to um, find some help to get boreholes or clean water for irrigation, that would be good for us. And also on the use of pesticides, some of them, they, they don't have, they don't follow the normal range between harvesting and then um, application. They apply, especially on cabbage, any time because they think the insects will destroy the crop if they don't spray. So they should be well educated for them to know the implication of what they are doing on the health of consumers. So they need more education. And also consumers also have to be educated on proper treatment of the vegetables we consume. Then I think with the, on this part of markets, women, the sellers, they also need to be educated on proper handling of vegetables, proper storage, and then giving the vegetables good atmosphere or environment, which will reduce the contamination level of the vegetables for us. Chairman of the Concerned Farmers Association, Nano Boadia, is calling for a food tracing system to help check this problem. Farmers know where they are, buying, they are buying their food stuff, so they know the kind of farms that the food stuff is coming from. But now go to a population and see everything is from wherever they send it, bag it to a population. And then people just buy them without any tag, nothing. So if there was something like a food poisoning, we will not know the source of the the one that brought it. That is why concerned farmers, we are doing this. It's a project that we are doing. We've just started it. So uh, we're also telling the other farmers that they can be part of it. You can register with us, you know, so that at the end of the day, we'll get to know that you, vegetable A, let's say Joseph 1B farm, you know, you, you have been tagged. So if it's today that you harvest your farm product, we know that it's today that you harvest your farm product. It's inside the market, you know. And we have extension of research that they will check this and that and that. And you know, it's all, all this thing is happening all because lack of extension offices. We don't have them. You don't have them. You know, you can go to a whole community and then you have only maybe one extension officer. And it's an old person. He can't even use the motorbike or the bicycle. You go to, you go to him or her and you say, my bro, you me to me, ma. Aaron Atefua agrees there is the need for regulators like the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to set up. I think it's hard time that the industry associations that we have begin to pursue the standard that we have. Let's update them and also make effort to sensitize the industry actors. A competent authority is the municipal assemblies and the district assemblies. They are to ensure that nobody just gets out, cook food and go and put it by a gutter and sell. A competent authority is the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. In agriculture, we have something called good agricultural practices. In our situation, we use good agricultural practices as a productivity tool to enhance output. But in other jurisdictions, good agricultural practices is used as a quality management tool to enhance quality of products. And based on good agricultural practices, we can educate our farmers not only to improve productivity, but also to improve quality of the food they put on the table. But he believes it's about time consumers took ultimate responsibility for the food they consumed and insisted that only clean and adulterated stuff enters their stomach. The consumer has the power to change the situation. We have regulators there, but... I think, in my perspective, the bus stops are the consumer because they have the purchasing power. They pay the cash. So any consumer watching this documentary or any consumer who had watched any documentary in the past must pick these lessons. We have to be observant. We have to give feedback to our producers. We have to give feedback to our middlemen and our middle women. Maria Lovelace Johnson of the Food and Drugs Authority agrees. But she says the Food and Drugs Authority will crack the whip on those who endanger the lives of consumers. The Public Health Act, Act 851, states that if you do such a thing, you will go to jail for a term not less than six months and not more than two years, and you will be fined as well. 
so we always do that but it's just that we don't come out to tell people this is what has happened because we are more interested in doing a lot of public education and enforcing the law but really afterwards we give it to the police they take it to court and we continue with our work because so the next time you settle for lunch vote with your money make sure you are getting hold of the safest possible food you can lay hands on and that you don't have poison on the menu for hotline my name is joseph opokugaku